Morning, Glory America. Bonjour. Hi, Canada. Greetings to my 400 affiliates everywhere across the country and wherever you're listening abroad or watching on YouTube or at HughHewitt.com. Good, good Friday to you. It is Good Friday. Sunday's coming. Uh, you know, amidst this Skype hype and amidst the Zoom boom that we are all engaged in as we isolate and communicate via the web, there is a danger lurking, which is who else is watching, who else is compromised. I turned to Vince Chrysler Chrysler, excuse me, to do this for me because he's the CEO and founder of Dark Cube. And Vince Chrysler has been doing this for a long time. He was previously a comms officer in the United States Air Force. He worked in the executive office of the president and at the Pentagon in cybersecurity. He's written numerous articles on cybersecurity risk and threat identification, speaks frequently on cybersecurity management, IT security strategy, and Dark Cubed is where you ought to go if you need some help. But Vince, welcome. It's good to have you. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Vince, uh, would you break down for us the good and the bad of the Zoom boom? Because I have spent more time on Zoom in the last two weeks than I had previously in 64 years. Obviously, it didn't exist throughout my life. But you're seeing it go through the roof, but it's not without risk. Right. And you're like many other people. They they went from somewhere in the range of 20 million active users in February to 200 million active users by uh, just over the course of the last couple of weeks. Um, wow. and so that explosion of use of that platform um, has solved a lot of problems for our society. We have, you know, I, I volunteer for my church and we do church services. We did service last night on Zoom. I run a listserv for my neighborhood and we did a, a, a local neighborhood um, happy hour using Zoom. I talk with my family and friends and relatives, and it's just a great way to connect people when there's really no other way to connect. Um, but just like any digital platform, there are risks, and that's what we're seeing elevated in the news today. Can we talk about uh, specifically your preference for connectivity? I also use Zoom through the church. I also use Zoom with my family. I also use Zoom with our business, uh, Salem Communication. What are the risks associated with Zoom, and are they the same as associated with Skype, and do you have a preference in your dark-cubed uh, uh, CEO hat or as a church volunteer hat? Do you have preferences among them, and are there ways to mitigate risks, and what are those risks? Yeah, I think any IT system has risk, and there, there are lots of alternatives to Zoom, and I think you know those alternatives are all vying for a very big mar- market opportunity, which is why we're seeing a lot of noise right now. You know, Microsoft is pushing their Teams product. Uh, we have products by Adobe. We have products by Cisco. Um, the differentiator for me and the reason I use Zoom and my my company and I use it for my family and friends is just the ease of use. What Zoom has done a really good job of, and their CEO is passionate about this, um, is to make it very easy to join and access. And unfortunately, if it's very easy to join and access, it's hard to incorporate strong security controls at the same time you make ease of access. And so they've really been having to walk a fine line of, you know, it's hard to enter a password. It's hard to say, you know, don't not only click this link, but enter this 27 character number. They only use six, but or they only use nine, but for for uh, reference sake. So you also have to enter in this password and you have to click yes and you have to click no and people just get confused and walk away. And so Zoom has really tried to walk the line in terms of how do you make this simple and easy but then how do you also incorporate security controls? And that's what their team has woken up to with this boom is to say, you know, we've, we've dropped the ball on some of these security controls, and we've got to figure it out. And, you know, that dropping the ball is not unexpected. And what I've been um, – what I think is important to see about Zoom is that they've really stepped forward in terms of saying we understand we did things wrong. There are some, some security – some very bad things from a security perspective. But when a company does bad things from a security perspective, I like to see them own it and step up and fix them. And that's what Zoom is doing now. And I I think they should be proud of the work that they're doing. Now, talk to me about I've seen two kinds of stories. One, that there's a backdoor for the People's Republic of China, the Communist Chinese Party. The CCP has a backdoor, which means they are surveillance and they're not very intrusive. And then there are intrusive idiots who are, uh, for example, I saw a story they are invading recovery groups uh, with abusive messages uh, supremacy messages, pornography, and destroying people's repose and refuge. Uh, how, uh, on, on the scale of various threats, which is more the the quiet surveillance or the loud, noisy intervener? 
I, I think the loud, noisy stuff is is stark and scary and surprising. And you know, I, it it happened to one of the groups at my church because the person setting it up didn't have a password. And and best we can figure out, somebody just randomly guessed the, the meeting number. And within a minute, there were 15 people that had jumped in with all sorts of horrendous names and yelling stuff. And it was very very scary. Um, but, you know, that's just like walking down the street in, in any major city and getting yelled at by somebody. It's scary, and it invades your personal space. And Zoom has the security controls to lock those, to, to prevent those things from happening. I think on the, the PRC China issue, you know, I've written a number of articles in the past. We published a report on the Internet of Things space, which to me, you know, what I say is we're deploying the largest sensor grid in the history of the world with the Internet of Things, and China has command and control it control of that sensor grid. And so I'm, I'm one of the first people to call out kind of China's efforts around kind of spying and, and getting information and using technology to do so. Uh, we're seeing a new effort around banning Chinese telecom in the U.S. Uh, but I don't think that's the case here. I mean, we have, I, we have a, a CEO of Zoom who was born in China, um, but is now a U.S. citizen. It's a U.S. company owned by U.S. investors and U.S. shareholders which is completely different from me than when you look at the Internet of Things space. There's a company called Tuya out there that, that spun out of Alibaba that it has Chinese executives that owns this infrastructure of IoT. Those are two completely different stories in my mind. What do you make of TikTok, Vince Chrysler? <laughs> I tend to believe the stories that it's a great way to get access to information on people, and it, there, there are some very strong ties back to China. Um, but I, you know, it's funny people don't care, and it's, you know, I think you you mentioned in the intro. I've written a lot about risk management, yeah. And you know, I think cybersecurity is a big, big technical space. There's a, a lot of people think it's, it's a lot of computers and technology. The punchline at the end of the joke of cybersecurity for me is it's about boring old risk management, which means there's threat, vulnerability, and consequence. And times like this, where there's a global pandemic and people are stuck at home that resets the risk equation. So, you know, in normal times, would I be railing against TikTok and other things? Possibly. I think right now <laughs> the risk equation has changed. And, you know, there's, there's some minutes of happiness that come from people watching these videos and people are accepting the risk that the Chinese might be tracking where they're going. And, and you know, I'm not necessarily against all that right now. Now, Vince, I, I happen to have a, a world in which I talk to a lot of people with whom the PRC would be interested. I do not encrypt anything on the theory that nothing – I'm not capable of actually encrypting <laughs> anything. Uh, is there a certain um, freedom that comes with uh, que sera, sera? If I had a producer, we'd go out with que sera, sera when it comes to privacy. <laughs> um, I, I think it's hard to keep information secret. Um, I think the challenge, you know, be, because of the technology issues around it, um, it, it's hard to get access at mainstream. Um, I think there are definitely spaces where encryption and security is needed. And, like, we do a lot of work in the Department of Defense space. We're doing a paid pilot with the DOD now. Um, and there are certainly areas where encryption and protection of information matters. I think in the general public, you know, there, there's a serious debate in, in, the, in the security space around Zoom and encryption. And it centers around the fact that some of the encryption that Zoom has used is a lower level of encryption that's relatively easy to break. And if I were doing sensitive business stuff on Zoom, M&A transactions, I would be concerned about that because people might be interested in, in cracking through those. If I'm talking with my neighborhood and friends, you know, I'm not sure why we care if it's AES-128 or AES-256 from an encryption perspective. So, I'm not sure I care that I don't know what that means. I just I'm very glad to know that you know that it with the, uh, tell me about when when someone is looking for help. Let's close with this. Not everyone can hire Dark Cube. Not everyone's in the Beltway. Not everyone needs a DoD certified analyst. Who ought they to turn to to help them? Uh, there are churches all over the United States that need uh, Vince Chrysler who will step up in their kind. Of, how do you trust that somebody knows what they're doing? Well, I, I think, you know, we just have to go back to that old reaching out to the community and, and looking for support from family and friends. And we have an entire generation of youth right now that are pretty technically savvy that have a lot of free time on their hands. Um, I know, you know, our, our kids and their friends are trying to find ways to be entrepreneurial and help people out. And, you know, as I, as I wrapped up my article, you know, if you're having trouble with these technology issues, call your granddaughter or your niece or your nephew 
um, they're available. Get them on Zoom, get them on FaceTime, get them on whatever platform you want, um, and they'll help you through these technology issues. Vince, would you send me the uh, the link to the article so I can tweet that out to people in the old-fashioned way and let them read that? Because I think uh, you've been a master at translating for uh, people who are 50 and older what they ought to be doing and how to be using Zoom, et cetera. I appreciate your time and your efforts, Vince, very, very much. Uh, follow him on Twitter at Vince Chrysler, C-R-I-S-L-E-R. Follow Dark Cubed on Twitter as well. Or 